Hi again and welcome back. This is module two, which I've called Getting Acquainted with Microsoft Project. Now by now, you will have gone through module one, which was called Project Management Demystified. It was an overview of what projects are and what the job of a project manager is, so that you can put into context how to use Microsoft Projects. You'll have also watched my Learn to Use Microsoft Project 2010 in 16 minutes flat. Well, not quite as crazy as it sounds. Its intent was to give you confidence and to see that it's not very hard to actually get the basics set up. When I run live seminars, that's one of the first things I do with a class, and that is to just get them to input some simple tasks and to play around with it quickly to grow confidence. So I hope you've watched that as well. In this one, however, much like moving into a new home, what I want you to get acquainted with is the various views, forms and tables of Microsoft Project. Don't worry too much about remembering all of the views. You'll get familiarity with many of these as we go through the remaining modules. So sit back and relax. And as I said earlier, it's important that as you watch me go through the various views, that you pause the video from time to time when you feel comfortable and just open up Microsoft Project and to try opening some of the views and navigating around much like I'm doing step by step in this module two. I'll try to, whenever possible, point you to the workbook page number. In this case, this is page 20, although I won't do it for every single page. But if I think there's a key point, I'll make the point that this is mentioned on page what have you within the manual. So hopefully you've got that printed out and near to hand, as well as watching these videos. So I really do want to start from square one here. Uh, so let me now go to the bottom of my screen and open up Microsoft Project. OK, first things first, as you will have learned from my very brief overview, this is the Gantt chart and it's the default view. We can see it up here. I've got the task tab open and here we have the Gantt chart. I'll click on it just to show you. Yes, this is indeed the default Gantt chart view. Now, as I mentioned in my overview, that Microsoft Project is in effect a database containing information on the various tasks and resources within a typical project file. So it will hold task information, resource information, assignments when you assign resources to tasks. It will give you information on project timing and the progress. And it will also give you financial information on costs, cost variance and so on and so forth. And the way in which it does it is via a series of some 24 or more views. We also have tables, and here's an example here, which is called the entry table. More of that later. There are also sheet views and forms and also graphs. I'll describe and demonstrate all of these in this module. So one of the first things you'll want to do, of course, is to open a project file, unless, of course, you're creating a new one here. In this module, I just want to get you used to the various screens and views. So let's go to the file menu over here. And without more ado, have a quick look at some of the fairly common and standard Office compliant commands here. You can save your project when it makes sense to you. Don't forget that up here, you've got the quick access toolbar. Now with Microsoft Project 2010, you've got multiple undos, which is a huge bonus on earlier versions, let me tell you. But you've also got save here, so you can do a quick save whenever you're in the middle of work and you want to carry on doing so without going to the file. However, let's go back to the file tab again. You can open a project, in which case, if you've got a file on your PC already, you can click open and go and choose that file, or you can close this file down here. Going to Info, as you can see this is selected, gives you project server accounts and organizing global templates. I won't be dealing with any of those. What's quite useful is the recent. Here, if you have been modifying recent files, it allows you to quickly get at them rather than going open and searching for where they are. In my case, I've been doing a lot of work, as you might imagine, on creating files for this very training that you're watching now and you can see all of my recent files here. You can click on new if you want to open up a new project. Now here there are some templates and if you have saved any they'll be here. 
you can create new project files from Excel workbooks and so on and so forth and what's quite interesting is that at office.com there are various templates that you can download uh, for example if we go on planners here let's see what crops up uh, you can download a wine tasting fundraiser type project and a wedding planner just to look at a couple and there are many many more if you go to my workbook you'll find on page 22 I'll give you an active link here that you can actually go and search out the templates that are available after all why reinvent the wheel for what we're doing right now however I suggest you stay with my video okay you can also print out views well there's not much to look at in this project since we haven't done anything yet so I'll look again at that shortly and you can save and send for example you can send a project file as an email attachment which could be quite useful when you've got remote teams you've got a help screen which you can click on here and you can get online help and the options tab I'll be covering in great detail in the next module so I'll leave that for now if I may and of course you can exit it here however what I want to do is open up a recent file it's one of the files that you got when you downloaded my product it's called module 2 underscore views dot mpp and it's worth just noting here that dot mpp is the standard extension for all Microsoft project files if you're sharing these by the way with other individuals who don't have Microsoft project installed on their PC you can download a free viewer from Microsoft so that they can view any files that you've created okay I'm gonna click on this and open it and I hope you're doing the same now all I've done here is merely to create a typical project with tasks already created with resources assigned a few problems going on such as over allocated resources it's merely a mechanism for you to actually get used to some of the views after all it wouldn't mean a lot if you were looking at views with no information don't worry that I haven't taught you yet how to do all this stuff as we go on to the remaining modules I'll get you to gradually build a full life project much like this based on the scenario that I've created and this is exactly the scenario you see here but it's just a file so that you can actually observe the many views that we're now going to go through you may want to pause this video while you pull up this file on your PC if you wish so that you can follow me through as we go now just to get you used to the navigating the basic screen here this as I said is the Gantt chart view you can always see the name of it because over here on the left you have printed vertically the name of the view itself clearly seeing this is the Gantt chart and then the Gantt chart view you've got the table or sheet view on this side and you've got the time frame on this side these two vertical bars if you overlay your mouse pointer you can see a little shape there of two parallel bars click and hold the left hand button and you can move this over and you can see that this really is a table with various columns in it of data automatically created as you enter your tasks and schedule them notice at the end of each one it says add new column and there are many many fields inside the database of Microsoft Project and don't worry your head at the moment but here's a great big stonking list in alphabetical order and you could add any of these to any of the tables that's not my point here let's just go and pull this back to here if you get this close to a table column edge and double click now with this symbol it'll snap to it neatly keeping it as you see now one of the things that's most important is this piece up here it's called the ribbon this whole section here is called the ribbon and it has various tabs file we've just looked at task resource project view and format and I'll go through quite a few of these now although as you might imagine with this many command sections your head could start spinning so don't worry too much as I said I'm just showing you around your new home I just want you to get a feel for what it is what the views are what the various rooms are what the various fixtures and fittings are you don't need to worry too much about remembering all of this so the ribbon is up here with tabs let's keep on the task tab here and you can see here the Gantt chart view which is the one we're showing you can click on this and you can see some of the most popular views that you can get from this quick access 
menu here. There are many more views and you can click to more views here and see them. Don't worry, we'll be doing that in this section. The other place you can see views is on the view tab, quite naturally. Now the Gantt chart view gives you a Gantt chart and there's a second type of Gantt called a tracking Gantt. But again, you've got more views if you wish. Right now I'm not going to go through all of these, but just to let you know that here you can see some of the usage views, the resource sheet, the calendar view, network diagram, and again other views. So frankly, good old Microsoft Project, much like many other Office compatible products, give you many ways of getting at the same thing. I'm going to go back and look at task for now, and we'll look at the rest later. You'll notice that each of these sections, which are called command groups, are split. Here's clipboard related stuff, font related stuff, schedule related command groups, task related command groups, and so on and so forth. Um, this ribbon really is a step forward from previous versions. Microsoft Project was never fully compatible in terms of the pull down menus with other products, and this brings it nicely into line and if you're familiar with Excel or Word then you'll fall quite naturally into getting used to scanning this and getting what you need. Clicking on resource tab for example again you have resource related command groups assignments insert properties and level. You'll notice some of these are greyed out because it's inappropriate for what you've selected here. At project level tab as you might expect you'll get project level information. We'll look at project information here and changing working time in the coming modules. View as we've just seen gives you the various views and over here it gives you methods to manipulate such views. Don't worry, I will go through these in detail. And format depends very much on what view you've got. Remember we've got the Gantt chart view now. So as you might expect it gives you lots of formatting options of making your bars different colours and styles, I would warn you, particularly if you're in an organisation that's using Microsoft Project, that I should keep this fairly standard and not create different colours. It makes it harder to read when you're sharing information amongst other members of your organisation. OK, let's go back to task again. And while your attention is at the top of the screen, there is a shortcut key using control on your keyboard plus F1 and what this does is it shows or hides the ribbon can you see that here we can see the ribbon there we can't I would suggest certainly while you're learning you should keep the ribbon present but it can unclutter the screen if you're particularly focused on filling out information here the other particularly useful and new feature we've got here is using the timeline now if you go to your mouse pointer anywhere in the time frame screen and right click it says show timeline you'll see this demonstrated on page 22 of my step-by-step -step guide and it shows this view up here now this particular project starts on this date and finishes here and this will automatically scale itself so it's showing you where you are from start to finish notice here it's got this piece highlighted to that piece. That's of course because you're looking from this point to this point. Now you may notice coming down to the bottom right of the screen, number one is you've got a few quick selections. Here you can select the resource sheet, the team planner view, the task usage view and the Gantt chart. I'll cover those separately later. But you've also got your zoom in and zoom out controls. So I could press the negative button here and zoom out to see a zoomed part of the screen like so and press the plus button to come back into detail again yes it's a bit annoying it does float all over the place here but one of the good things you can do let me just deliberately offset this so it's looking entirely in the wrong place if I click on the define requirements task please do so and in the task tab over here it's got a very useful command called scroll to task. This will immediately move the time frame to show that particular task bar that you're referring to here. So it's a very quick and neat way of, of scrolling left and right 
and getting exactly what you need on the screen. You can fine-tune it by using the scroll bars here, of course. Back to our timeline. What you can do, for example, if I click on the Create Workbook task, that's number 18, and if I double-click on it, again, I'm showing you new stuff here, but don't worry, don't try and memorize this. It's actually got the General tab, and it's got Display on Timeline. If I click this, like so, and press OK, shows exactly in the time frame shown where that particular task occurs in the bigger picture. You may find that useful, you may not. I'll undo that, so we're back to square one. Notice, because we've got this part of the screen shown, and on the timeline, you've got these bars. Can you see they go active when I overlay them? I can, for example, do this, and it's a neat way of zooming and changing the time frame to suit. Quite a powerful feature. I can come out here, I can go to the beginning here, and I can deliberately select a piece of the time frame that I want to use. So I think this is a very powerful zoom tool that you might like to remember. Get To get rid of it, come down here is the easiest way, and click on Show Timeline, and it'll hide it. Now, of course, we need to get back to the beginning, so I'll click on Project Start, and scroll to task. Hope you can see what I'm doing here. I'm just casually taking you through the various ideas. You can pause at any time and try it for yourself. So I intend to look at tables later on, but this here, as I've already said, is the entry table. If we go to the View menu and click on Tables, you'll see a choice of them, and there's Entry. For example, if I click on the Cost table, here it is. All this is doing, it's showing you columnized information relating to each of the tasks because, of course, you're in a task view. It shows you fixed costs, total cost of each task per row. The baseline, which we haven't saved yet, so more of that later. Variance is variance against the baseline. Since we haven't saved that, that doesn't mean much to you. Actual cost, when we start tracking actual costs and remaining costs. And just like all the others, you can add a new column if you choose. So back to the tables then. Let's go back and put the entry table in because we'll look at some more later on. Go back to here, double click. OK, now I want to revisit the file tab up here. What this actually gives and what this is called is the backstage view. And if you remember when I gave you a brief overview, I said we'll look at print when there's something interesting to look at. And here's a good example. If I click the print view, it actually shows the Gantt chart, so that if you don't want to send any of this electronically, you can actually simply print it out. Just like most print views and print controls in other Microsoft Office applications, you can change the settings, you can change the dates that you want to print out. If, for example, you wanted a smaller section, or wider section. This, for example, show, goes to the 25th of May. Let's come out to the 1st of June, and you'll see it just brings that out a bit further. You've got one to eight pages here. You can change the orientation. Here I've got it set to A4. If you're my good friends in the US of A watching this, then you'll probably have it as letter format, and it'll just slightly change the aspect ratio, as I'm sure you're aware. I won't go too much into detail on this because it's fairly intuitive and you've probably used similar things in other Office applications. Note the magnifying glass here where you can zoom in. Not a lot as it happens, but you can zoom in and zoom out. And of course, you can print as many copies as you wish. We'll come back out of there, however, and back to the Task tab. Now, the next general feature I want to discuss, you'll find this on page 24, of my step-by-step -step guide is the shortcut menu or mini toolbar. Now this is context sensitive in that, for example, if I overlaid one of these tasks and pressed right click, you'll find the mini toolbar references things to do with tasks, all the usual cut, copy, insert, delete, and so on and so forth. Many of these won't mean a lot to you because we haven't covered them. But for now, just be aware that right-clicking is usually a very quick way of getting exactly the information you need on Microsoft Projects, rather than going necessarily 
to the ribbon itself. If I took my pointer anywhere in the timeline and right clicked it, again it'll give options that you may want to use. You can put grid lines coming down vertically if you wish. You can change bar styles. You can change layout which is interesting. You'll notice that as each task links together, in this case we're using the somewhat straight version. You can use this bent version. I don't know a better way to describe it than that where it sort of comes around here. Sometimes that can be clearer. For example, where you have, in this case here, two tasks immediately after each other, makes it a bit clearer which exactly the linking is. I'll go back and set it back to the default setting. You can change the date format that you see on Gantt chart bars. You can even change the bar height. That might be interesting um, for some folks who find looking at the fine details uh, a little bit difficult. Let me just show you what this looks like and then we'll set it back to the default. You see this makes the bars fatter. Sometimes f people find that a little bit easier to look at. Set that back to 12 and that's as much as we need to look at at this point. So there's the right click. What's interesting it's got a show split and I just want to touch on this now before we get into detail. If you click on that, it splits the screen into a top screen and a bottom screen. In this case, it's got the Gantt chart in the top screen and the task form in the bottom screen. We'll cover that shortly, but notice that whenever I click in the top screen, here a task called Search Google Keywords, it gives, in this case, resource information and work information based on that. Again, all I'm showing you here is the shortcut menus. We know what it looks like if you right click in a Gantt chart view. If we right click in the task form view, it'll give you different choices about what information you store here. For example, here's work, here's cost. I've got the costs in this particular file in US dollars. So again, it depends on what you're looking at here. Predecessors and successors. Here, whichever task you click at the top, it will show you the predecessor and the successor. I'll show you a nicer way of looking at this a little later. Now to get rid of this, I've just got used to going on this horizontal double bar here to get two parallel lines again and simply double clicking with the left hand mouse button and it gets rid of it. So you can click on details and that will divide the screen, but some views are already in double screen version. Before we go there, I want to show you another shortcut. Can you see the name of the Gantt chart here? If I overlay my mouse pointer here and right click, it'll give me the choice of the different views, much like if I went up here and got a similar set. So let's right click on the Gantt chart here, and I want you to go and find a view which isn't available on this pull down menu. But what you do is you select more views, and by the way, I could have got this from the view tab at the top. And I want you to scroll down and just find a view called the task entry view and click apply. Can you see? This is the Gantt chart in the top screen with the task form in the bottom screen. Again, I can right click and show different versions here. Yes, I know it might seem a little bit surprising that Microsoft Project gives you so many different ways to get similar information, but I guess that's the flexibility of it. At this early juncture, I don't want to confuse you too much, so without more ado, let's just look at some of the more common views to build your understanding of the different ways in which information can be shown. Now, if you go to page 26 of the step-by-step -step guide, you'll find details of the Team Planner view. This is a brand new view, so let's go and select it here, Team Planner. It's a brand new view for Microsoft Project 2010. And it shows here resource names. Those in red are over allocated. It shows the time frame when the tasks are scheduled to happen for each individual. And for those that are over allocated, in the case of Nick Litton here, my nephew, you've got a little red bar above and below the tasks that are causing a problem. Come on down here and it's got unassigned tasks, which makes this quite a useful view. 
Let me just give a simulated example here. I'm going to go back to the Gantt chart. I'm going to scroll down and I'm going to deliberately create a task which has no resources on it. Like so. Let's give it a duration of five days, say. There we go. Now go back to the Team Planner view, and here's our unassigned task here. So what we can do here is we can get the four-pointed cross here, click and hold the left-hand button, and bring it up, and attach it to a name, like Judith Cadero, and find a place, and that's where you want it to occur in terms of the time frame. And if I dropped it there, I'd then be giving that to Jude Cordero as now a task that she is working on. Another way of using this view is I notice that Nick Litton here is over allocated because of these two tasks which are occurring in the same time frame. Again using the four pointed cross here I could pick this up for example move it outside of that time frame and now Nick Litton has gone back to being in black text in other words I've resolved his over allocation. I'll undo that so we've got it back to where we were before. So put simply, dragging any task horizontally changes the task schedule while dragging it vertically from one resource to another changes to whom the task is being assigned in terms of resources. Let's go back to the Gantt chart. Okay, now again to remind you what I said when we first started this module, I'm merely here just to show you some views. I'm showing you lots of information without clarifying too much. I don't intend to go into too much detail on this ribbon because we'll cover that at the appropriate times in the coming modules. Let's go and have a look at the resource sheet view. Go into Gantt chart here, go into the pull down menu, resource sheet. This is where you set up your resource pool. Again, if you remember watching my Learn Microsoft project in 16 minutes flat, you saw me type in names exactly as I would do here and set the various aspects of each resource. As you might imagine, all resource names in red are over allocated and again we'll wait until we cover that in a much later module. Notice here that for a particular resource, we'll take myself here, this is a work type of resource which means it has a calendar. You can have material or pure cost resources. The initials by default will be the first initial of the first name. You can modify this. You can add groups. And by the way, just like Excel, if you go into the column header and get the little horizontal arrow here, you can double click and it will adjust the width so you can see the text inside it. Max units, very quickly for now, simply shows you how much of this person is available for this project. 100% means full time. But if Dave was working on two projects, then you might want to drop that to 50%. This shows their cost standard rate for each hour, how much that will cost in terms of work. If they assign overtime, you can put an overtime rate if you wish. Cost per use, let's imagine that Dave is a consultant, as indeed I am. If you give me a rate by giving me work on your project, I will have to travel, let's imagine, to visit you. So you could have a cost per use which covers my travel costs. So every time you assign me to a task, every hour it will cost you $50 and whatever the cost per use would be. Again, just briefly, prorated means that in terms of the task duration, this will be per day, if you will, but you could accrue all of my costs at the start of the task or at the end, if you wish. And more about calendars in a coming module, but as you can see by default, like the other resources, I'm based on the standard calendar, and if you recall, that's an eight-hour day, five days a week, Saturdays and Sundays as non-working, and 20 working days a month. Codes for any special codes, which we'll leave for the moment, and as always, you can add a new column. If there's any particular field you'd like to include here, again, I want to keep this absolutely standard so it helps you get used to Microsoft Project. So there it is, the resource sheet. Let's go back to the Gantt chart view. Because what I'm now going to look at is in fact a usage view. And the first one we'll look at is called task usage. There. This again has a table at the left hand side, as you can see, with certain information in it. 
On the right hand side you have a time frame, but instead of having a Gantt chart, it's showing in this case per day the amount of hours work per task and per individual. Take the prepare initial budget task, I'm assigned to that. You can see here on Monday the 9th of January, I'm down to do eight hours work. So these are very, very useful, particularly as you can actually enter in information here. I could type in four on the next day, for example, and now I'm doing four hours there. I'll delete that to keep the file the same as yours. We can also right click here, remember the shortcut menus, and you can, in this case, it adds different information. The default task usage view simply shows work. But suppose I wanted to show cost as well. Watch what happens very carefully. It's going to add a cost row for every single item. Notice the screen skip there because now, of course, I've got work and costs for Dave Litton on the task called Prepare Initial Budget. And as you might imagine, right clicking again, I could actually add any of these as well. When we actually come to deliver the project and Dave is booking real work, you can see actual work, cumulative work to date, and so on and so forth. I'll get rid of the cost so this looks much like your screen. So what have we got here? It's called task usage. And the reason being is because the main focus here is the name of a task and indented it shows the resources in italics assigned to each task. Let's use the quick menu here by right clicking. Let's have a look at resource usage. Very similar view but in this case it's organized by resource and by the way my name's in red because I'm over allocated. Can you see how valuable this is? It actually shows you the point in the time frame where the over allocation is appearing. You see back in the Gantt chart view you have no idea. You might see that create activities is over allocated but you can't see by how much and when. Whereas the resource usage view shows exactly that. In a similar way you can right click here and you can add extra rows per person per task. Now instead of showing the work effort for example numerically you could show it as a histogram and for this we will select the resource graph view. What we're seeing here is a full screen in this case it's Dave Litton Again, if you right click here, you can see next resource. Now it's Nick Litton, next resource, Karina Harrison, next resource, and so on and so forth. And what this is showing is the hours work per day. But be careful here because the time scale is showing double days, which is why it's showing 16 hours. If we zoomed in to show unique days, we can now see more precisely exactly what is occurring on each time frame. I'll show you in a minute how to adjust and scale the time frame to make it make more sense. It's fair enough on its own, but I find this much more useful when it's used in a split screen view. So I'm going to go to the Gantt chart view again, and I'm going to go to details, so I split the screen in two. Come down to the bottom screen and click it with your mouse, and so you're overlaying this grey area on the left, right click and choose the resource graph. Now if I click on, for example, define requirements, it shows me the individual who's assigned to that task, Karina Harrison, and when they're assigned. What's interesting, I notice in create activities there's over allocated resources. And sure enough you can see this shows exactly when. Notice these two time frames are harmonized together. If I scroll, the bottom screen is in harmony with the top in terms of time. So it's great for clicking down. And if you have got over allocated resources, here's another one. Frank Hall is over allocated. And not only can you see how much he's over allocated, 16 hours, but the very day. This is a Thursday in January. Just like before, remember the shortcut menus, right click. I can, instead of just showing work, I could show peak units. This shows that Frank is 200% over allocated on this particular day. I could also show costs. 
Now we're looking at a vertical scale showing dollars since this particular project is using dollars as the currency. Or I could show cumulative work which now shows at a particular time point how many hours in this case Frank Hall will have done on this particular project. I could use costs as well and show cumulative costs in a similar way and you can scroll on through and see how eventually at the end of the project let's go to this scroll to task go to the end of the very project go back to here and we can see that Frank Hall in total is costing us what's that a little over seven thousand dollars I'm going to double click on here and get rid of the split screen again if I may okay now I want to show you a view that isn't on the standard list it's in more views but I find absolutely invaluable I'm just going to click on write product descriptions here and go and find it click on the Gantt chart view go to more views and it's called the relationship diagram click on that and press apply what you'll see here is that you've got the task that you've selected and it shows the tasks that precede it and the tasks that succeed it this is absolutely valuable to check that you haven't made any logical mistakes in terms of predecessors and successors you can see the scroll bar at the bottom here you can simply go back and forth in time gradually click one at a time and find out the relationships of every single task you can see how powerful this is for example create PowerPoint slides needs to be done first before you can start any of these and so on and so forth very powerful view in a similar way you can use this in split screen I can go back to the Gantt chart select details so it splits the screen click in the bottom screen here go to more views select the relationship diagram press apply and now as I click through each task in the top screen now I'm using the down arrow key on my keyboard I can cycle through and check the relationships and to ensure that they're sensible and logical just like so you'll find this diagram on page 28 of my step-by-step -step guide let's get rid of this split screen and I want to show you another view here rather than just the Gantt chart view you're probably familiar with it by other names but it's called the network diagram and what this shows is each task as a box with the logical relationships between each shown as an arrow if you will you can move around this using the scroll buttons like so you can zoom in and out let's zoom out so we can see the bigger picture probably too much here because can't see the detail and then you can zoom in as and when you need to here's the start of the project up here for example you'll notice that standard tasks are shown as rectangles milestones as six-sided and within each task you have basic information like the name the start and finish dates and so on and so forth much like the Gantt chart you can create new tasks and link them if I click on create draft plan and scroll just and make a picture by clicking and holding my left hand button to create a rectangle and let go of the left hand button on my mouse a new task will have been created here which I can fill in directly on screen if I wish just put a nonsense title in or I can double click on it and get the task information uh, form and put the usual information in I don't think many of you will be doing that but it is quite useful if I now want to link this much like the Gantt bars I simply overlay it hold the left hand mouse button down and drag out and I could link it to any other task I'll delete this by clicking on it and pressing the delete button on my keyboard and it's removed itself and we're back to square one so there's the network diagram notice again if we scroll out you've got different color codes and symbols the red ones are critical tasks the blank ones if you will are non-critical tasks in terms of other views 
with regard to tasks there's a useful view called the calendar view which I've shown on page 30 again let's go to here and select calendar what this has got is pretty much like a monthly calendar you might have hanging on your wall and it shows each task showing the time frame within which it occurs with its name for folks who aren't project managers and aren't used to viewing Gantt charts and network diagrams this can be quite comforting since it's something which they are intuitively be able to use and read I don't think project managers would nef necessarily want to use this but it can be useful because you can see clearly that the task called create draft plan is two days and it starts on the 17th and ends on the 18th of January 2012. Go back to the Gantt chart again. I just want to touch on before we look at some more views at adjusting the time frame. Now as I said you can scroll in and out here which is okay, a little bit crude uh, in terms of the fact that it doesn't seem to have much control over what happens to these particular timeline scales. A better way to do this is to click on the view tab and go to the time scale command here. If you pull this down you can select this to particular days or weeks for example that's interestingly enough but what I prefer is if you go on down and it's got time scale if you now click on that you'll find that you could have total power over what's being shown here. Notice it's got a tab called top tier, middle tier and bottom tier. Well by default all you've got is the middle and bottom and what they're referring to here is where you can see the word December that's the middle tier and the bottom tier is this one here showing months and dates. If we go to the middle tier we've got this on months which is fair enough but if we go to weeks and count one which means it'll do one week at a time we can scale it this says 120 you can see you can shrink it what have you I'll back to 100 percent and then go to the bottom tier which is this one since we've got weeks on the top one we'll put days on this one again making sure you're counting one day press OK and you can see you've got something a lot more sensible so I think it's a very powerful command where you can actually adjust this so that you're viewing in comfort and you can see exactly what's going on just one more time, let's go back again, just so I can show you, on time scale, the top tier is by default not shown. But if you go down here, it gives you the options. And if we wanted three tiers, as you might imagine, this will show you the year. So click on the top screen, and I'll show years for the top tier. Press OK. And sure enough, this is showing 2012. There's the month, and here's the days. But as I say, by default, we don't show that. You can see that you can select also time scale here and get exactly the same thing. So I'm going to select show and just have two tiers, which is the default setting. And we're back to square one. OK, let's look at a couple of the form views. Again, I'm just going to right click on the Gantt chart here as a quick way of getting there. There's the task form. Now, what this is, as you might expect, because of its name, it gives the name of the task and then it gives in this case the predecessors and successors much like you've seen before where you can put different options in you can get the work variant and so on and so forth we'll visit some of these again when we cover a much later module and the resource form somewhat similar but as you might expect it's got the name of the resource here and it's got the activities that that particular resource is on and it gives you a opportunity to input certain data here should you wish like all of the forms again you can actually get different options here just finally then I now want to touch on the tables and just spend a few moments with you finishing off this uh, module just going through some of the tables in a bit more detail so let me pull this right over here so you can see the tables quite clearly Again, you can use the standard Excel trick of just double clicking here to adjust the table column widths if they need to be done, just so you can clearly see the information. And this, as you know, is the entry table. Let's go to here, and you can see it is, has been selected. So called, of course, because basically you, it's convenient for you to put the task names and durations in. 
and it gives you the linkage information and the resource names. Particularly useful when you're entering tasks in the first place is to see their start and finish dates. So this is a good choice of the types of fields that you'd want to use. Let's have a quick look at cost. Again, you'll still have the task name uh, to start with. No duration here, but what you have got is fixed cost, which is particularly useful when you want to apply a fixed cost to a task. Here, for example, on this one, define requirements, $120 has been assigned. If you double click on the name of the task, it's often a good idea to go to the notes field and make some notes here about the reasons for this particular fixed cost, as you can often forget about it once the project is underway. Other sections here in the cost is you've got the total cost of each task, of course. Once you save a baseline, this will be set. And once you're underway and you're tracking actual costs, you can compare that against the baseline, and that'll give you the variance field. When you're tracking actual costs, you put the actual in here, and this gives you the remaining from the total cost field. Look at a couple more. Let's look at the work table. Similar ways you might imagine. You've got the name of the task. You've got the total work hours on each task. Again, once you save the baseline, you'll have the baseline hours in here, the variance from the baseline as a result of putting actual hours and remaining hours. A useful field here is showing the percentage work complete. Just a quick point which we'll cover when we're doing tracking. There could well be a difference between a task being say 50% complete but the work ratio could be say 60% or even 30% or some other number. So this is percentage work complete. Let's have a look, a final look then. There's several here but I don't need to look at all of them. You can certainly stop the video and have a look at them yourself. But just one more I'd like to cover and that's the tracking table. This shows the actual start date once you have in fact started work on the task of course and the actual finish. This shows the percentage complete, this will be duration complete and a field here called physical percentage complete. It's to do with earned value so I won't touch on that now. Here's the actual duration and the remaining duration. So this is one of the reasons I like the tracking table. If you are tracking a task at just duration level Remember what I said at the very beginning, and that is that you should set Microsoft Project up to have just enough information to be in control. And maybe for a simple project, all you need to be able to enter is the actual days worked on a task and the remaining days, and you don't need to track work at all. Also includes the actual cost here and actual work hours. Like all of the tables, you've always got the option to add a new column at the end. Well, that brings us nicely to the end of this particular module, Module 2. So we'll meet again on the next module, Module 3, which is setting up the project environment. And in the next module, we'll start with a totally blank project file, and I'll start teaching you against the real scenario. So you'll start by setting up the environment, setting the options, and then as the remaining modules go in, entering tasks, putting their dependencies in, and so on and so forth. So thanks for your company, and we'll meet again on Module 3.